Hi everybody, it is Kevin Ho, and we are over here in Glen Park. We're at 118 Sussex. There it is. It's a lovely sort of Victorian home slash compound in this really unique sort of the area. Uh, area we're at. Diamond Street's over there, and then over there you have Chinnery, and you'll have the Glen Park Bart Station back here, and we are here to see this house, which is actually two structures. I think it's two bed one bath and then two bed and then the studio and the bath and you'll see. Uh, interestingly enough, the neighbors are remodeling there. Neighbors down there, I'm not sure what they're doing, but we will go in. Notice there's no parking in front, but it's all accessed through a little uh, alley called Poppy Lane, uh, back which we will see. So you'll see we are on the back side of the big, big hill, Diamond Heights that separates Diamond Heights from Noe Valley and from Portola. But it's a gentle slope all the way down towards where the freeway is down over there 280 and 101 is further back but i love the front yard you have some nice yuccas you have this nice arbor and trellis and you really do have a detached structure which is really nice in fact you'll see it is a victorian uh, modified over time uh, you got some interesting ornamentation and details. What I do like, you got the nice uh, river pebbles, the Mexican river pebbles. But over here, I really do like this. You're detached and you have a really broad, uh, it's actually more than 36 inches broad sort of separation between you and the house next door. Oh, those hydrangeas, I'm not sure if they're going to do well because it's kind of dark. We have the bamboo over here, retaining wall, and you'll see that they've all that's a eucalyptus, I think, and just really nice. Like this high fence here, which is really nice, and let's go in more bamboo up here. Let's go to this side. Important thing to note that if it is detached, you can see that they have a concrete, they have the concrete foundation there, and over here, actually, let's go down here. I haven't seen this part yet, too you are apart from them so your foundation is doing its own work let's go under here huh interesting all right so you've got i think there's a capped foundation but this is pretty substantial a lot of times when you have a brick foundation here they might just put a skim coat of concrete but here they put in the big bulk that actually helps hold everything back that's really uh, reassuring let's see here otherwise you have the old growth wood you can see you know it's old and it's old growth uh you don't have the modern sort of seismic update like the straps or the bolts but they can be added over time of course one day if you want to do something you can but you can see everything has settled over time which is to be expected i mean if you were 100 years old i think you'd want to settle and relax too concrete all along here concrete in the front whoops sorry about that there we go concrete in the front wow look how huge that is a big Gigant wow, that is really quite immense. A um, lot of huh, lot of structure here. That's that's kind of a lot actually, but it works. Um, you've got power here, and then you've got a little bit. And I have little cracks here and there. One of the things you have to remember is that foundation it acts in concert together, but isn't necessarily a like unitary body as well, because there are certain parts where you can add foundation work and support and whatnot. You've got extra doors there, interestingly, and you've got more cross basin this way because you don't have a garage, and then you've got this beam here. There's a lot of stuff here that if you ever want to remodel it or re-engineer it, you would probably have to figure out some stuff down here. But let's go back here, conduit, Romex, that's nice, and armored cable, and over here again, you can see original foundations there, then they dug out here, and they capped it, and they added this the steel and the rebar there you can see the tie down so, so it is fairly robust over here they put the concrete in to prevent the raw soil from coming out you can see a little bit of there can't see it's a good thing in other words too well, as a bulk um and sort of pragmatic approach you know they didn't dig everything out and do everything over but they did do it enough to make it you know sound uh the neighbors are doing a renovation like we said um i think they're going to do some French draining or whatnot too, and they are connecting the two structures, power meter here 
and we will go inside. Sorry about that. I always think it's important to take a look at what you see um, inside first. So you have the steps going up, sort of uh, a late addition. You've got some poured concrete and pebbles, a little rough terrazzo, and you've got this metal uh, work here that's not original to the house, obviously. This looks like it was built with a weird tile. For me, I think I might take the opportunity and do something really fabulous with some cool lighting underneath handrails or in-step lights, maybe even under the treads. Uh, there's some great examples of that. But here's a view out front. It's lovely, you've had this big bay window here. It is double pane glass, which is really nice. And let's go in. So you've got some nice detailing here. Some ornamentation, tall ceilings. And let's take a look, really gigantic window. There's that window offset here, and there's Joe, right? Nate. The Nate, oh, sorry, Nate, who's from uh, David's group, and would not take a look over here. That is pretty lovely. You see the back side, oh, actually, you, know, you see Excelsior, Portola, all the way going up there, and then a little bit down towards San Bruno. You can see in the distance over there. They're really lovely. Going in here, that was their entrance, which is really nice. A little coat rack there, coat hangers, or whatnot, little hooks, so you have an entrance. Probably there were double doors here before, but not now. But you guys put some in. You want to fill it in, you probably could. No, oh, the doors are inside the wall, so if you want, doors inside here. So coming off here, the dining area, obviously, we've got different, different uh, floor patterns, of course. First bedroom here. Although there is no closet, you could put a wardrobe, you can even build one if you wanted to, a really narrow one too, but pretty nice and spacious. I like the light. That's something you really can't change too, too much. And over here, again, it looks out. That's a great view. Now let's go through dining room here. All the lighting has been updated and replaced for the sale. This is your main floor bathroom. We have a different type of floor here. Old school tub with um, that sort of coffee shop type of terrazzo look. You can easily update it if you replace it too because you have access to all the plumbing and everything, down, everything downstairs that we saw. Oh, that's pretty lovely. I like this, the molding here, vanity, toilet, and you can you can do a lot here. You, what we might do is mirror all the way up and the lighting is nice here. Different floating vanity. You could do the in-wall toilet again because you have access to all the plumbing downstairs. It might give you just enough room that it really makes an impact too. So going through here, we're going into the kitchen. So here you can see the original floors, probably Douglas fir or soft pine. I think it's fir because the grains are tighter. But here is the kitchen. So you've got this kind of rustic sort of bohemian feel where you've got a Dutch oven. Of course you would, right? You've got the wood countertops here, and then the older cabinets here. Functional, but easy to upgrade if you wanted to. Same thing here, you could add more going up. I like all the windows here, the bamboos, nice and lovely, some roses. I'm not sure how long those will last, although they look like they've been there for a while. The longer sink. Now, it looks like to me that this was probably a screened in porch or a mudroom that was added on to. You have some interesting structural elements here and a really tight staircase, which we'll see. So my guess is that there could have been the cottage ended here, or maybe even here, because you see the old transom, and you see the old window there. And that's sort of symbolic of San Francisco, where it keeps being added on to over time, and you get these really interesting spaces. These? I'm not sure if they're real or not. Anyway, over here, you've got the porch, which we'll see, a sink here, You've got a garbage disposal, and then you've got decently good water pressure after all you are at the bottom of a long slope. I don't have my measuring thing here, unfortunately, but pretty tall ceilings, I would say. Note that tall ceilings, you could actually probably, if you wanted to, lower the floor plate from upstairs to here, and we'll see why you'd want to do that in a second. Let's finish up down here. So then you go into this sort of mudroom, laundry room, utility area. It's different, and then you step up into this room here, which does it keep going. No, it doesn't keep going. But another step up here, and you see the neighbor's shed. So they have plans to connect that structure and this structure together. So this is more of the, I would say, more of an improvised space. 
they have it staged as a you know, nice sitting area. I think it'd be great for an office. Their construction is probably going to go on for, I think, maybe a couple more months. I hope they're not too long. Uh, but it's a nice little area, you know, perfect for working. You can always change that into a door, maybe. Or, well, I'm not sure if you can. You have to check. But you could do that. And then out here, again, you've got these little drainage things all around. So I think drainage is something you've got to drain here. So and another sort of drain over here as well. And you've got a dryer vent here. And then your uh, steps as well. So let's go out here. We'll see this nice area. Really lovely sort of outdoor area. Bamboo is very mature. That goes on onto Poppy Lane, which we'll see in a second. This is the garage. And we'll go there in a second so we keep track of everything. Now, the back you'll see there is the original house, probably. And this might have been the end, like we were saying. And then here you see various different elements. Um, kind of you know, a little more improvised. Um, oh, I love that Japanese maple. It's really lovely and the bamboo. So really lovely back here. But let's go back inside. And like I was saying, so over time, you know, things were added on in houses in San Francisco, you know, to varying degrees of success, varying degrees of conscientiousness and at various times. It's part of what makes San Francisco unique, I suppose. So let's go upstairs, sort of this homage to the Naughty Pine Nordic Forest. You've got this pantry sideways, uh, I think tele panel here, I think there's an alarm system, so that must have been there before. And like we said, there was that window. Let's go upstairs. So, stairs are narrow, more narrow, well used. Take a look here. It's got that kind of interesting, maybe Russian rivery log cabin feel. So you come up here. Pretty steep up here. Don't ever break a leg. And you can see it has been here for a while. You've got the back room, which we'll see in one second, and the front room over here. So here is the upstairs bathroom. Has a sink, kind of cleaning. You've got the clock like tub. You've got this dormer that's popped out. See the roof of a roof line? This pops out as a dormer. I'm not sure if you can see any other examples there. But oh, actually, over there in the distance, you see the original roof line? Pop out dormer. It's a nice way of doing it. So, you've got this clock foot tub. You could make it into a regular tub if you put a liner in it. Put the plumbing inside. It could be something you would do. Or a regular shower. Toilets here. And then you've got a little storage here. That's kind of lovely. And again, the original floors. And let's see. Since you see this floats right on top of it. Because then you've got the San Francisco -y oak floors. Smaller room here. Again, with that roof line here. This looks like an old gas line of some kind. Maybe there was a heater. Maybe it was a radiator. Maybe it's a steam one. Double pane windows here, also good. Love the back side of this tree. And then here, a little closet as well. Hmm, interesting. All right, and then here, that is the alarm system. <clears throat> the front room, back here. Really sweeping view. Now, proportionally, it might look a little different on the outside, but on the inside, it's pretty lovely. Now, it is a little lower than you'd expect because, you know, it was added on at one point. But I still love the view, and the sunset here would be pretty incredible. Probably the sunrise, too, because that is south and east, so it's nice. So you have the knee wall here, or not knee wall, but you have this space underneath the rest of the part, and it goes out to there, and they've added some built-ins here. A little thing for the laundry, and then your drawers. That's pretty, uh, I like that. It's pretty neat. Now, you could, one day, open this up and keep going towards the ridge line um, and have a more dramatic feel if you wanted to. Uh, putting some lights at the ridge be maybe really cool. You get a sort of open feel kind of neat if you wanted to. Over here, you can see the, the last part of that dormer. So they use it as a closet. You could say, I want to expand the bathroom that much more. It's a little complicated. If you ever want to do that, you can decide it. And you can see these are lath and plaster walls, which probably means you'll need a mesh network. Um, just because Wi-Fi could be tougher. A little access panel up there to the attic, and take a look here. So this is the back room, again with a little uh, incline here, they got here, interesting placement for that. And then back here, again, ooh, that's actually kind of lovely. You've got the um, closet here, again with the old school floors. Now, 
we're going out here side. So the back side is the interesting part of the house as well. So you've got another sort of outdoor area. So it's great because you've got that outdoor area down there. You've got one up here. And now we're on top of the garage structure, which is here. So in here, yeah, it's not the most straightforward, but it's pretty neat. The little spaces that get created. So you've got the trusses here, and you've got this nice little trapezoid shaped room, I think. So you've got that. It overlooks out there. Now, remember, next door, there can be the front structure and the back structure. You can see that over there. So over here, you've got a studio, basically. You've got this little um, kitchenette area, wine fridge. You've got the heater here. It probably has Go somewhere, maybe here, maybe not. It depends. Sometimes I'll take it out for showings and for appraisals, so we don't know what exactly you could have back here or not. But it's lovely. I, I like this vibe. It's, it's a very sort of colorful feel, southwestern type of thing. In here, enhanced by that. Bathroom again, that kind of trapezoid shape, standing shower, and a vanity. Very colorful. And then over here again, like that. So we are actually above the garage, which we will now show you. So the garage is interesting because we're on a lane here, poppy lane. You can see it just a little bit over there. Actually, maybe we'll go out. Mm, let's go out this. Okay, here it is. So this is uh, the garage. Kind of goofy, different. And see, the neighbors are doing the renovation, but. Yeah, it's a tank structure. You've got the foundation here. I think it is concrete. Um, old school garage door, which takes up a lot of height, you can see, whatnot. I would change it up to a rolling one here. There's power up here because these lights are here, and I would do that. So you'd have more headroom because it's kind of narrow. Now, here's the interesting part. Not paved. I'm really surprised. I saw this paved. See up there? It is, and here it's not. This is the back side of the garage, the outside here. So you go along here, but here it's not paved. So they're doing their work, but I would suspect that maybe you'd one day want to at least put some uh, decomposed gravel or something to pave it down because when you walk down here, and this is used a lot going through Egypt, and I suspect you know people need to park their cars, garage here you come into the cobblestone path that goes all the way out to Diamond Street back there. So it's a long sort of path coming up here. You would go, if you ever encounter a neighbor, it would be one of those situations where you'd have to reverse or they'd have to reverse and somebody would turn off somewhere. You know, it's kind of cool that you don't have a garage in the front and you have a little lane in the back, but the lane is narrower and it is not paved here, which you know, maybe during the winter or whatnot, it'd be good to get a four-wheel drive or a quad trail or something where you can um, navigate this area too. So, yeah, side of the house you can see wasn't painted. It's an older color. And um, coming inside here now, it's really cool that you have this extra structure, but it's not you know, tied into the other one as like the people next door are doing too. So, uh, interesting. Properties, at least. So, I don't know how I, what I think about that, but it's still pretty unique. And for the right situation, it might be really perfect. That's a kind of here, so you step up and you come under, and you would go back under here, right? Back to the side here, and you would come back into the house tank of water heater for the garage, up, you know, up there, and you come back in here, and this would be your entrance. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? That is our listening to David. So, thank you. No, no, it's good. I am now going to turn it on. So, thank you all, everybody, for watching. It's Kevin. Talk to you soon. Okay? Bye bye.